And for the next presentation, we'll be staying on the island. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Roberta Mosca, who is a staff anesthesiologist at the University Hospital of South Manchester. He received his training in Naples, Italy, and UK. He has a special interest in echo training and quality assurance. Uh, Dr. Mosca is a British Society of Echo Examiner and is an active member of EACTIAC subcommittee, and he regularly lectures and runs the Manchester TOB training program as well as the quality assurance program in Manchester. Dr. Mosca will be talking to us about 3D LV assessment. Dr. Mosca. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> sharing my slides. Okay, good afternoon from UK, at least. Um, thanks for the presentation, the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm working at busy Cathedral Union in Manchester, and uh, I thank the organizer to choose me for presenting this fascinating uh, um, and controversial topic of uh, 3D LV volume assessment. I have no financial disclosure to share. However, I'm going to show imaging from a particular vendor which provide echo cards in, uh, in my workplace. So the aims of these sessions are to describe um, the utility and the advantages of 3D transesophageal echocardiography. Um, sorry. Um, <clears throat> And um, also consider limitations. I will go through example to show how to use 3D echo to measure LV volume and function in the intraoperative setting. For um, more than 20 years, the continuous advancement in uh, computer and crystal technology resulted in a revolutionary transduce architecture where a new sophisticated generation of over 3,000 crystals is arranged in row and columns. Today, these innovative matrix array user can acquire a pyramidal volumetric data set displaying the three-dimensional echocardiography image in real time. These characteristics have made a real-time 3D echo not anymore a research or a luxury tool, but an extraordinary diagnostic modality in clinical practice. One of its first and still current popular application is the LV volume assessment. Real-time 3D echo generally has three main acquisition modes, light 3D, 3D zoom, and full volume. So the light 3D is a button used to switch the system from 2D mode into real-time 3D to watch and acquire real-time 3D volumetric motion without any reconstructions. However, light 3D is limited to a narrow angle with a partial volume and may not provide much information. So it generally recommended for interventional guidance, rhythm disturbances, any situation in which the volume interest is within that limit angle. 3D zoom display a focus volume of interest defined by a truncated slice of an arbitrary sector angle and the greater details with or without ECG gating. So real-time 3D zoom is indicated for the acquisition of valves and smaller structure as a thrombus or masses. Full volume 3D instead combines a series of sub-volumes acquired with ECG gating to create a final, larger, reconstructed full volume image. So the 3D full volume acquisition is the only imaging modality that can capture the entire left ventricular volume at a sufficient frame rate, 20 hertz or more, that allow dynamic assessment. So you can also use other modality like true view or glass view with color, but they are limited by narrow angle like 3D live and not usable for volume assessment. So the broad term or real time is typically applied to all current 3D echocardiography images to distinguish them from the earlier generation or complicated reconstructed 3D images, as we remember. However, we should consider the light 3D and 3D zoom modes as a true real time using simultaneous EGG recording, whereas the full volume use ECG gating 
to synchronize image portion fused together over sequential cardiac cycles, and we could call them as a near real time, if we wish. So this is because the full image is unavailable until the final recorder cycle is completed. So as it clearly can be demonstrated by the image on the right, showing stitching lines in the middle of a GL two chamber view, merging the four narrow wedges of the left ventricle volume over four consecutive R bits. The assessment of the left ventricular systolic function is a cornerstone on echocardiography examination. And the left ventricular ejection fraction is the most requested and used parameter. We also know that the LV volumes and ejection fraction are the key parameters to establish diagnosis and stratify prognosis. Moreover, important treatment decisions will be either surgery, device implantation, medical therapy, and evaluation of the therapeutic effects are based on these parameters. So as a result of these significant factors, we need to make any possible efforts to gain the most accurate and reproducible measurement. So for pure left ventricular function assessment, we can narrow it down to three modality, full volume, biplane, and x-plane. And I'm going to explain next how to achieve the measurements. For full volume, we need to start to get a decently optimized mid-esophageal zero degrees for chamber view. And after all the mechanical ventilation, electrocautery or manipulation, if we are in theater, we press the full volume button and acquire a four beat cycle. We need to remember to check the frequency must be over 20 Hertz to have any meaningful uh, images. Once the acquisition is correctly done and of course restart the ventilation, we can start to do offline work. As you can see, the screen is now split in four images. The four chamber, its orthogonal view corresponding to the two chamber, and a short axis view plus the 3D view with each individual bit ECG trace at the bottom. To note, each box has the same color sector line to be positioned after confirming to be into the end diastolic frame. After confirming the end diastolic frame, the sector green and red lines need to be aligned in such a way to go through the left ventricle apex the blue lines to cut through the middle left ventricular chamber, and the yellow arrow to point the middle of the ventricular septum. Next, we will need to label the mitral anus reference points as a septal and lateral in the four chamber view and anterior inferior into the two chamber view. Finally, we will need to label the apical point. And after that, the soft analysis will show the end of solid volume. Then we have to repeat the process for NC solid frame and label the reference points without though moving the sector lines. So we have the NC solid volume. Although in both frames, it's very likely we will need to use manual border editing along the endocardial line to ensure the entirety of the left ventricular chamber is included. Once the volumes are finalized, we can start the sequence analysis process, which takes uh, a few seconds and presents the two view views and the LV cast playing along the cardiac cycle. And the bottom of the screen, it shows 17 different lines corresponding to each of the LV segments contribution to the change of LV volume along the cardiac cycle. So essentially, flatter is the line, less contractile they are. We can also notice that each of the segmental line has a red arrow indicating the deepest point of their curve. So as it could help to clearly identify not only the hypokinetic territory in the case of ischemia, but also related to acrony, dyssynchrony, and indication for resynchronization therapy. So you can also switch the cast view in color-coded segments to have a visual confirmation of the anomaly. 
itself. You can switch into other different pages for global volume summary and have a precise regional RR time so to help decision to treat our failure with CRT, for example. But again, this is not something related to the perioperative setting. However, I found some evidence usable in the perioperative setting as I show you in the next case. So in this case, after acquiring decent endosolid volume, and I had to edit endocardial border of the NC solid volume, which is, as I said, is not uh, a rare happen, I'm afraid. And once we move into the analysis of the FNT segmental lines, it's easy to spot which territory has less excursion. We can easily identify it overing our course on the line or the left ventricular coral square. And we can also highlight the excursion by each of the segmental layers, either basal, mid, or apical. And finally, we could select the parametric imaging page, which allows to check the 17 segments excursion with the help of LV bull's eyes. So the report includes two color coded polar maps. The top one for segmental timing and the bottom one for segmental excursion. And it also showed the intraventricular desynchrony indices. So the timing analysis of regional endocardial motion is an essential feature of the parametric display. The polar map is created showing the average timing of endocardial motion in green. Early contracting segments before the average are displayed in shade of blue while the lay contraction are in red color. For the visual interpretation of regional LV contracting or excursion, endocardial motion is a shade of blue, representing normal inward motion segments, and red for outward moving dyskinetic segment. The black show for, a show for akinetic segments. As I mentioned before, there are a few evidence like this paper showing that how desynchrony of more than 72 milliseconds lead to higher risk of complication for patients undergoing coronary artery bypass grafts. And this is something we can predict with our full volume assessment. A second modality to assess LV volume is the 3D biplane, which is the modality we can use a single bit acquisition, which reduces the frequency, but allow us to do a true real-time LV assessment. For this reason, this modality can find its scope in arts with the regular heart rate or in situation of gross hemodynamical instability. With the biplane, the four chamber, the two chamber images are acquired in the same cardiac cycle. This is important because it means that as opposed as 2D Simpson's method, it had assure that they display the same cycle volume and ejection fraction. And once acquired the image, we need to optimize the plane as per full volume before, with the exception of having a yellow arrow to position. So a further advantage of this modality is the ability to find the true apical point and avoid foreshortening. Then after drawing a line across the mitral anus, we can drag down the area to fill LV in the LV cavity as um, four and two chamber, just like Simpsons, first in diastole and then in systole. And after the border editing, we have the volume and the ejection fraction reports. The third 3D LV assess modality is explain. Explain function is able to show two orthogonal images simultaneously. Although in this, we are unable to access the LV global volume. I think it can be extremely useful to analyze um, segmental wall motion normality, especially in the operating room. In this example, we can appreciate the anterior wall akinesia in transgastric short axis LV view. However, only with the help of X plane image on the right, we can immediately appreciate the akinesia is limited only for the mid territory of the anterior wall. So from Saska talk, we now know that 2D is the most widespread method used in clinical practice yet, mainly due to its visibility, wide distribution, and rapid acquisition. But however, 2D echo methods are multiple limitation. They are operator dependent. They rely on visual interpretation 
and they are subjected to inter and intra observer variability. In 2D echo, to calculate a volume, geometrical modeling of chamber shape must be performed, and consequently, the ejection fracture estimation is um, subjected to error in presence of any pathology. So the endocardial visualization necessary to define chamber dimension is often difficult in 2D echo. And to counter this, the probe may be rotated, obtain better images, and these eventually produce an inland problem notably for shortening view and provide incorrect location on the apex. On the other hand, 2D echo has better spatial resolution, meaning the ability of an ultrasound system to distinguish between two points at a particular depth in tissue. This is because we have in 3D reduced line density and therefore worse lateral resolution. 2D also better temporal resolution, which represents the extent to which an ultrasound the system is able to distinguish change between successive image frames over time. So in essence, the movements. Temporal resolution is determined by the image frame rate of the system, essentially in Earth, which may vary depending on number of factors like propagation speed of the sound wave, the depth of the width of the field, the number of beam lines per field, and the numbers of focal points. So, however, meta-analysis like this one where Dorotz and collaborator put 23 studies with more than 1,600 echocardiograms, I have found that compared with 2D echo, 3D was more accurate for lung, left ventricular and diastolic volume and systolic volume and ejection fraction, taking a CMR as a golden standard. Like in this example from my clinical practice, 3D echo LV volume were found significantly larger compared to 2D echo. However, more clinical decisions are based on ejection fraction. So with ejection fraction, there is no statistical difference in bias between 3D echo and 2D echo. So the major benefits of 3D echo really can be appreciated by significant 2D echo intra and intra observer variability, where 2, 3D demonstrate much lower variance on both. So if we compare instead the 3D echo against the CMR, we found that different meta-analysis did also identify the underestimation of 3D echo volumes compared to CMR, but they are much less than 2D echo. Hertz disease like dilatation and hypertrophy leads to a greater distance between the ultrasound beam and the ventricle. So decrease the image quality further. Irregular borders as a result of these pathologies impairing the accuracy of 3D echo of the border tracing and analysis and suggest a further contribute to the greater variation between 3D echo and CMR. So although every meta-analysis showed that the accuracy of EF ejection fraction determined by 3D echo was excellent in normal art. The underestimation of, from a disease left ventricle effect and the stolic and systolic volume resulting in the underestimation of ejection fraction in this patient population. For the comparable point is the ability to real-time real 3D echo to produce volume time curves. And these allow more detailed qualitative, quantitative analysis of uh, left ventricular performance, like uh, LV filling rates, as a reflection of the continuous LV volume change throughout the cardiac cycle. So these have been demonstrated correlate well with the CMR. CMR is not without its own limitations, of course, notably the cost, the increase in time, reduce the capacity, and some device incompatibility, of course, the patient claustrophobia. So if we move into looking at transesophageal versus transthoracic, we need to remember that all the major supporting evidence of the accuracy and reproducibility of real-time 3D echo or left ventricle volume are based on multicenter study and guidelines for the use of transthoracic echo, TT echo. So we also know that although the visualization of many cardiac structures is improved with transesophageal echo, 
some difference in measurements have been found between transesophageal echo and transthoracic, particularly for chamber dimension and thickness. So these differences are primarily due to the inability obtained from the transesophageal approach to standardize imaging frames and views used when quantified chamber dimension with transthoracic echo. Then we have so far evidence that real-time 3D echo has really shown to be accurate tool for LV volume assessment. However, LV border detection in 3D echo remains a time-consuming task. It jeopardizes the application of modality routine practice, really. So to overcome this, a 3D automated segmentation framework has been developed with the ability to capture the LV morphology in real time. So this automated algorithm allows for a fast and accurate quantification of the 3D cardiac volume and the global function with the minimal user input. So it may therefore contribute to the further integration of 3D echo in routine clinical practice. But unfortunately, this automated algorithm is currently available only from transthoracic modality, not in transesophageal. And moreover, as I showed earlier, in semi-automatic border detection software has difficult tracking the endocardium, even despite clear endocardial border definition on the naked eye. So this requires manual adjustment of the border and could potentially introduce additional error in volume and ejection fraction measurements. So the transits of a GL probe is relatively fixed in the esophagus with the apex in the far sector of field. Unlike the mobile probe in transthoracic, with its proximity of the apex being able to include even the most dilated mitral annulus in the wider sector, so not always possible in transesophageal. Also, calcification of mitral apparatus can cause image dropout of the left ventricle of the endocardial borders with transesophageal echo. So the intraoperative transesophageal echo involve additional challenges such as mechanical ventilation, diatherm interference, direct cardiac manipulation, and rapidly uh, changing loading condition, among the many others. And finally, the two modalities have very different applications. So the transthoracic echocardiography 3D LV assessment is more indicated for risk stratification and planning new therapy or modify them. The transthoracic 3D LV has a strong evidence in early identification of cardiotoxicity induced by chemotherapy in electrophysiology therapeutic indications such as implant of devices or planning surgery if we consider left ventricular and systolic volume a better prognostic value of uh, um, left ventricular and systolic diameter. The transthoracic transesophageal echo 3D volume instead as a smaller range of indication in perioperative setting, showing superiority to 2D echo for identification of new segmental wall motion normality, left ventricular aneurysm, or desynchrony after coronary artery bypass grafts. So when we talk about 3D LV volume mutation, we need first to reiterate the concept of poor 2D images makes a 3D image poor. We also clarify its near real-time 3D modality across the list four consecutive bits, which results of being subjected to stitching artifacts and non-compatibility with the arrhythmias. It needs at least 20 years frequency to achieve meaningful images. It can be time-consuming, especially when there is a need of border editing, certainly not having the automated algorithm like the transthoracic um, is a further limiting factor. And as just explained, sometimes it's difficult to include the entirety of the, light, the dilated heart, the dilated left ventricle, and the apex is not well visualized, being as a far field. However, most important, the 3D echo ejection fracture doesn't differ from the 2D echo. Before concluding this controversial talk, I'd like to leave you reflecting on this case anesthetized last week. As you can see from this 2D picture, we can semi-quantitatively classify this LV function as poor, but how poor is the ejection fraction? If you use conventional 2D measurements, you find consistent results between LV and mode, ejection fraction 
the fractional air shortening of 24% and Simpson biplane of 26%. But the 3 dlv has shown an ejection fraction as low as 18%. So we can also appreciate the basal inferior aneurysmal segment visible in the green square, which protrudes uh, the reference mesh of the bottom right of the video. So my personal take reflection at this was that I was glad to be able to use this additional modality for the patient's sake. So in the summary, I'll say the 3D LV assessment is the closest modality to CMR results. It's mainly validated with transthoracic echo. It strongly indicates a modality of choice in outpatient setting and provide similar ejection fraction but greater volume than 2D Simpsons. Proves less inter and intra-observer variability than 2D. And the intraoperative TE 3D LV assessment carries more challenges. It got limited benefits, but it's always a useful ability to have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mosca, for that excellent presentation.